Hi everyone, nice to see you. Okay, we should start now. And today we will look into the design of automation circuit. But when we see the words design, it's very abstract, right? As we know, design is not something easy, yet uh, it's not teachable. Okay, so it's actually based on an experience, right? So the the uh, today's uh, sessions, what we will do is we will go through several ideas, basic ideas behind uh, the typical automation circuits. Okay, that you can use. Okay, from time to time. Okay, to kickstart and to embed the functions into your desired uh, operations. So this is what we have uh, seen previously. Okay, so remember this course mainly uh, based on the textbook okay, written by Menesis, right? The references are shown there, right? So previously we have seen this kind of uh, diagram where this is shows uh, electro pneumatic automations right so the first thing that we need to do is we have to know the idea what we are going to do okay so we know the functions we draw the the design the mechanical design the electrical design then slowly after that how we're going to integrate them together and that would be described by this automation circuit so our task today is to see okay, how to actually uh, form this uh, automation circuit easily right based on the typical uh, typical functions that we usually use uh, in any automations right? so, so this is the goal of this lesson okay we try to uh, show some typical design and by that hopefully you will be able to design and draw okay at least based on the existing one okay the typical one so that uh, you can achieve the desirable functions okay and also uh, please be reminded that there is a quiz set up okay in Google classroom make sure you do it and the due date is tonight right so it has been there since Sunday noon i guess or maybe it's monday morning right and also the assignment number one okay so the due date is tomorrow right so please uh, quickly get this done the quiz uh, i guess would take you not maybe 10 minutes okay to complete right okay now the in designing the automation circuit they are basically two principles okay that we may use okay the first one we call it latch uh, principle okay you know latch right okay the the lock that you can switch left right okay then the second one will be the principle of command okay principle of command okay so in the latch principle itself what we can see is that uh, we try to do like a latch okay on and off okay or open and close the, the circuit okay so what automation circuit uh, can we select or to energize or de-energize a relay okay this in this case the relay c and therefore directly control the operations of uh, uh, a motor okay so this is how uh, we can uh, so-called do a latch principle okay so we have discussed this briefly previously that uh, remember we add uh, extensions over here okay with a relay okay which is uh, normally open so whenever you start to press the button to start it okay so this will now kick start this uh or close this circuit okay automatically even though you have released the start button it will continue to operate okay so we call it permanently uh started okay or close okay then uh by doing that 
you can continuously uh, do even though you you have to re you can release the button okay so this is the idea of a uh, latch principle that uh, you can actually energize uh, de-energize a relay okay a relay by directly controlling the the motor so if the motor is on then you continue to on if it is off then you continue to off okay so it, that is our functions okay so when we start it okay we want it to continue to run okay from this two diagram okay now you can see that from this two diagram itself okay so this will also functions we provide a a, a switch right that you can uh, turn it on and off okay by yourself right by press the button okay and that button you cannot release then you will continue to to work okay so your motor will continue to to run okay whereas on this side we have a what we call the extensions of this part and we will call these functions as a self latching contact right so it will be activated when the motor start to run right so this relay start to run okay so what happened is that what is the important difference between these two both can we, we can actually achieve the same goal turning on the motor and let it run okay so main difference between that if is uh, if this is mainly on the safety if the machine suddenly uh, the power being cut down right remember if you have this kind of a uh, circuit just like your home fan okay so you turn it on your home fan right so when power cut okay when the car after the breakdown then the power resume what happens is that when the power resume your for your your fan will continue to will, will now start automatically it will not close okay whereas in this uh self latching contact uh method okay you press the start button okay it will continue to run but when power cut down power trip okay so what happens is that when power trip the power will not now no longer energize this relay or the motor or the fan so in that case okay this circuit will now open right meaning to say it will not start and suddenly the power now start again right and your operation will not automatically start okay you have to press the start button again so this is an important safety features okay that uh that being Im implemented in this circuit even though they they functions exactly the same okay but uh important safety features that the machine doesn't run by itself okay without you pressing the start okay even though it may be troublesome okay but because of the safety you don't want it to be somehow started okay power trip or some breakdown in the circuit okay someone going to repair or what okay and suddenly it turns on okay without pressing the start it will not turn on okay that is the main idea right so okay so this is uh, what we we would uh, design okay in general again uh, we have uh, this kind of considerations okay when we designing the uh, auto an automation circuit okay we try to make sure that they are uh, equipped or secured with uh, safety fuels okay that is the very uh, simple but uh, important features okay even though it's very uh, small things okay but that is a very important safety features that to ensure that uh, the operations protect both the human as well as the equipment right that we will discuss later on okay then in uh, mostly in most of the control panel if the automation circuit are reachable somehow reachable to the human okay let's say uh, let's say our computer or normal home fan okay reachable to our, our uh, human normally we will try to design using a low voltage uh, to operate in a low voltage so that uh, whatever happened you still have time to save okay but 
if it is dealing with high voltage okay we are extremely not encouraged okay to do it manually meaning to say if you are dealing with high voltage uh, equipment okay you don't actually use human to operate the on and off okay you will just use button okay to control it maybe some from a distance and so on so that uh, you have a gap okay to save yourself okay in case of short circuit current leakage and so on okay then also for uh, automation circuit that's that is why uh, the automation circuit is very important especially in the high uh, current high voltage uh, equipment right in the big machines or very high temperatures uh, conditions okay? the automation circuits also uh, being designed in usually okay designed in the parallel branch okay so you will remember you you see we have the the power supply the no, the neutral and the rated uh, voltage okay so we will design in in this way okay parallel 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 okay so that we we can easily see the the sequence or the or the relationship between them okay we don't want to complicate everything because this is a very important step okay that um, make sure everything uh, goes as it is right so we will design within this okay even though you may not have a a limit in the length okay you can extend okay you have multiple equipments over here so in one line we try to when we draw the automation circuit we, we draw in maybe going down or from left to right okay so after that we will continue in the parallel form okay? and then every branch if possible should be simple okay and it may consist of series and parallel or maybe a mixing of them okay from one uh, contact to another okay then also you may have uh, only one coil okay should get energized okay so this is another uh, important safety features uh, that we have uh, gone through previously remember uh, we have a uh, automation circuit that have a relay that will actually break the others uh, circuit okay to ensure that it will not be activated suddenly all right then uh, the last one would be uh, it's never permissible to have a serial connections of relays coil in the same branch okay so in one single branch itself okay so one in one single branch so we will try to have only uh, one so-called relay coil okay so that this will control the others Okay, so if you want to control the others, okay, so make sure you draw another uh, parallel lines, okay, or so, uh, to in order to control them, okay, to work together. Then in the another principles, we call it the principle of command. This one is uh, when you need a remote, uh, so-called remote control of it, okay. So we call it as a command. So when we deal with uh, a circuit okay the sensors will play a role in doing this command okay these sensors can be in the form of limit switch or maybe the the level sensors or whatever it is okay that tells you from far away okay something is not right or something have reached a limit or whatever it is and then it tells you a, a command what to do okay to react so in this uh, circuit itself okay normally we will put a, a symbol like this okay so a file at the end of this line okay a file at the end of this line so that uh, you don't actually need to really draw this sensor out okay so this is just an illustrations okay uh, you just have to draw this and then put this sign and this sign okay separate with a gap meaning to say we we know this is a kind of um, a command being uh, coming in from somewhere okay so this somewhere you may just put a notations like maybe in this case you may what want to put s1 okay means sensor one or maybe a thermostat okay tt1 and so on okay so this will tells us tells us that this related to certain device okay what we are waiting a command from that okay so you can see that there are multiples uh, commands over here and this is how we can actually decentralize the automations 
for multiple uh, machines you can see that multiple machines okay we just have to copy and paste okay as long as the functions are similar okay so we can just copy and paste right this one after another just label it accordingly okay we have a fuse right then remote command whether to switch to here or to the other sides and so on okay so this is how we can control uh, multiple uh, machines okay based on the signal from somewhere else right next we will look into the electrical and mechanical latch okay the electrical latch basically referring uh, to the functions okay which achieve through uh, an through a normally close contact okay normally close contact of a power relay in activations of a branch okay so through this uh, electrical lunch the activations of the relay is prevented based on the electrical approach okay using an electrical approach such uh, such that you can see that this as uh, we have discussed previously okay we try to make sure that when let's say when coil one okay or motor one is running okay we will make sure that motor two will never start okay by having uh, a relay okay that we disconnect them okay so normal we have a we insert a normally closed contact over here okay and we will make sure that we break it okay so that you will not able to start until we may stop this one and start the other one okay so this is a, a so-called safety feature we latch from one side to to the other okay in the electrical form right through the applications of a relay okay? then for a mechanical uh, latch then it will be a uh, a very straightforward okay uh, mac a kind of mechanism instead of a, a relay okay that we switch by our own okay but we have a so-called a safety features okay uh, that do not allows you to really switch okay until you really turn it off okay so this this kind of a, a, a latching okay in between them uh, very straightforward okay only how we going to implement whether whether it's through an electrical way or a mechanical way right to latch from one side um, and the other okay so in order to do the latching okay then we have this uh, a chain latch okay so this change last uh, would be useful okay especially when we are dealing in uh, in a large uh, production line we have multiple machines okay line up and we when we want we, we start okay normally we don't want to start everything at the same time okay this will cause a high power surge okay uh, during the starting okay as you know the starting current will be very high and so on so in order to do that we call we, we apply this concept called a chain latch okay so that such that uh, it will operate one after the other okay so this is an example of a sequential uh, startup of four machines okay with a chain electric latching concept right uh, we have a fuse okay we have our coil one to four and what happened is that we will start one after the other so when we press the start here then it will start the coil one and then the motor will run and this one will, will start to to close okay and then after that when this successfully start okay then we will have another one started okay and then this one after this one started we will activate the second one and so on okay so this is the idea behind the the sequential start up uh, sequential start large of machines okay to start uh, progressively through one single operations and this also will save us time like we don't need to press one two three four okay we only press one and you start 
uh, accordingly okay imagine you have maybe uh, uh, 60 machines okay you may want to connect everything into into one circuit okay or you may want to do like this okay you have uh, 10 circuit okay but one activate one uh, the, the next one okay so this is how we can uh, do it another uh, sequential uh, start is uh, we can do it in this way okay but in this uh, design or circuit uh, itself we have uh, what we call uh, without a reopening okay in case of the overload relay trip okay so this is again a kind of safety features okay that you may want to incorporate okay if it is a uh, critical if what any of the of the so-called overload relay trip okay you need to reset it okay before you can again start everything okay otherwise uh, it will get uh, disconnected right so we add this so this uh, latching okay remember this this concept of when you start it will continue to start until uh, it's break then you, everything will break okay you will not able to restart by itself okay a same uh, concept of a power trip right so when a power trip happens okay it may happen only to one of the the so-called uh, one of the circuit or the motor itself okay so if let's say it only happened to this line okay c2 okay then c1 c3 c4 will continue to run okay after it gets started so meaning to say this always in contact so when power fell okay and then it start again so this one will will continue to flow okay this is what we intend to prevent okay if it is critical or not enclosed in somehow right so that is the concept of uh, latching right through the usage of relay and uh, yeah the relay and the normally closed uh, and normally open uh, switch right next would be the basic procedure in synthesizing uh, automation circuit right so here we will uh, gone through several um, circuit okay basic circuit again right that will helps you to incorporate in your design later on if you desire certain like for example this one the first case would be a motor operation with a thermal overload protection so if that would be the case then you just copy exactly this one and improve from there okay that is how you can start right so they basically uh, operate in the way in a way that uh, very similar okay it's at either you want to operate a motor you want to operate a pump or whatever it is okay so the concept would be similar okay only uh, that's why the automation circuit idea would be there okay only how based on your creativity how you would mix them up later on right so we will go through the the simple uh, ideas behind uh, several basic automation circuit right so this one would be the motor operations with thermal overload protections right so here we have the thermal overload uh, relay okay that being utilized in the switching contact right so it would be uh, inserted so-called indirectly or it can be uh, through a direct contact okay to your circuit to the purpose is just to make sure you break down the power circuit that's it right so we have this e okay to open this contact e okay the overload uh, relay right so very simple in the circuit you just add this one then you have this feature of thermal overload protections right then the second one would be the operations and fault indicator okay so this indicator is just an 
LED light, all right, to indicate whether it's running or there is a fault, okay, not running, right? So in order to tap this signal, okay, what happened is that to tap the signal, uh, you will have this overload uh, protections, okay, relay, okay, and before that we just tap another line to an overload indicator. This is just an LED, okay, a light, okay, which is connected to each other right so when this open this one will close that's it right so meaning to say when it trip then this overload fault indicator will light up that's it all right so very straightforward and then uh, in order to tell whether the machine is running or not okay then you just tap directly parallel to your coil okay your motor whatever it is okay so you just parallel tap it over here so whenever uh, this circuit the whole circuit is uh, closed properly okay you just tap such that when this is uh, energized then this indicator will energize as well meaning to say the machine is running okay very straightforward right you just make a parallel line to towards it okay to tell what is going on okay in some cases let's say okay you may also want to put a thermal temperature fault siren okay just like you have a fire or very very high temperature so you can always add those in right next would be the machine operation with a starting delay right so this starting delay would be useful remember we have gone through the uh, sequential self latch okay in that diagram itself okay one will uh, switch on the next one okay and so on in that previous diagram what happened is that switching on through electric is very fast okay so once it detect a signal it will switch to the next one so in that way uh, the power search okay that we try to prevent previously may not be able to solve okay it will just uh, switch very fast from one machine to the other okay so in if certain operations desire us to to do this kind of uh, sequential starting okay we can incorporate a, a delay so that uh, this machine will start maybe five seconds or one minute before the next one okay this also allows uh, uh, so called a control of the machines such that uh, certain machines will do set, uh, certain operations we don't need it to be started okay when we don't receive any any product from one end okay you may have a packaging machines we have a bottle filling machines liquid machines and so on right so you want to start in sequence somehow right so this is how you can do it either by through we call it through a starting delay okay we delay it okay one after another so this is uh, examples of a pump filling uh, mechanism okay so in this uh, pump itself we need to uh, so called in the in the pump okay normally it will damage itself if no water or liquid actually running inside it okay we call it hydro lubricate inside okay so in order for it to prolong their their life okay what we need to do is we want to ensure that most of the time they are lubricated they are filled with water in inside the pump okay therefore uh, what we need to do is you can either let the water to fill up the tank okay before you really start the pump Right, just like you may have an automatic electric uh, water pump in your home okay so that pump itself actually have a small tank and you want it to be filled before it started right so it may take some time okay to let it fill so you in this case you may want to start the switch to let the water flow into the tank first okay maybe one to four minutes before you really start the, the pump okay this is the idea of starting with a delay right so that uh, starting time you can estimate through your knowledge okay 
you if you know the flow uh, of the of the liquid okay to fill up at which level you can actually estimate the time required for it uh, to meet your requirement before you start okay so from once you we have uh, estimate the time okay uh, required interval to complete the previous uh, process then we can now start the pump uh, by doing uh, this so-called self latching okay and so on right so the concept is exactly the same right only thing is you have this uh, timer okay so this timer relay now once we switch this on okay then this timer relay will start to count okay before we actually activate this side okay so you can see that uh this section this sections okay is again the same concept right like the previous one okay the start button when you press okay then it will continuously to flow right so the only thing is that you need to activate this uh this uh, timer relay right this switching so in order to do that we just tap at uh, uh, a timer over here that will control this switch right that is the the simple idea that's why the concept is very uh, similar everywhere right so you just have to get the idea and you can start to apply it accordingly right so you can switch it through this way okay and with these features meaning to say it have the the features of uh, not automatically uh, started okay so if it's breakdown it will not uh, when the power resume it will not get started okay through these uh, features right remember this is the feature where you when it trips okay power trip it will not start okay until you you really uh, tells this timer to start again right reset it and so on so you can see that this timer will operate in this way okay this rs signal when we we start it okay when we start we close the circuit it will the voltage will flow through this uh this wall over here okay we key right but uh it will continue to flow after certain period of time that you you set okay over here then the signal will drop and it will start to activate this right so the power will now start to flow on the other side okay to to run the the motor right Here is uh, another example of a start delay operations of machines. Okay, so we have two circuits here. Okay, and then uh, you can see that the circuit here they differ with uh, certain features only, right? Very similar. We have timer D and C. Okay, timer D and C right so in this uh, automation circuit itself okay we have a permanent uh, operations or stop of machine c okay through timer right meaning to say when it's activated it will start okay and stop through this uh, timer so this timer relay again uh, the selections of it is very important such that uh, it some certain timers uh, relay if you once it's activated it only give us a power signal and so on right so it's you control and either you want to start and stop okay the relay itself right and once we have this okay then we would say that it is non re-operational okay not uh, not uh, open by itself again Okay, so how we can achieve this uh, non-open by itself again is through this relay D. Okay, again you can see these features over here. Okay, these features is the non-reopen reoperations uh, features. Okay, that we have uh, seen previously. When you click start, okay, it will continue to flow until power trip. Right power cut off then this one will open and everything will open right so this is a features that it will non-operations -oper okay by itself 
and the timer in this case timer will continuously okay run under what change during the operations right this is the the idea behind it okay whereas for this one the difference is that this timer do not need to always on okay meaning to say when you select the the kind the kind of uh, timer in the, this uh, timer relay in this case is will just give us a signal similar to this okay so once it's uh, tick okay then it, it can stop okay to operate so it can stop to operate and it's now being uh, taken over by the other circuit right because this operate this will close okay so power will now flow from this side okay and this one after that you reopen it no problem okay now current will flow from this side through this all right so this is the the slight difference uh, in between them okay the only difference is that when you use this type meaning to say the timer relay that you use must always uh, activate or must close the circuit okay all the time okay where after after it's, it takes okay or after the time have uh, started okay so this is related to the type of uh, timer relay that you're going to use okay which one you, you should use okay which kind of automation circuit you may use in this case next would be the machines operations with stop delay right so again <coughs> Uh, this stop delay features are uh, important okay when we have uh, machines running and you would expect that when you press the stop but uh, the stop button okay the the items that you are going to process it may still continue to process okay unless really power trip okay or but usually power trip in a plant they have a so-called power backup right so so that everything will will finish okay before they they stop error all the operations okay so this is the idea that uh, when you press stop it will not stop everything immediately let's say you are filling uh, liquid into a bottle okay in a production line when you press start you will never know whether they they're, they are in the process of filling or not right what you need to do is you put a stopping delay so that you know if in order to fill up one one bottle of uh, uh, of drink okay let's say okay I don't say any drink okay so a uh, drink itself uh, maybe it may takes uh, five seconds okay to fill up one bottle right so you just have to give a stop delay of six seconds or seven seconds or ten seconds up to you okay such that they can complete uh, this operation before the machine stop okay because you are you are going to cut off the power, the liquid supply and so on right so you can do this uh, cutting off and so on after certain time right same thing with the conveyor belt you don't want it to stop immediately so that you can deliver the product out of the machines okay before you stop okay otherwise you will have trouble like you have to crawl inside the machines and so on to to actually take it out okay so this is again a very simple and important features in most of the automation circuit right so when we start to press the stop button then we intend to let the unfinished part uh, to continue okay and finalize it okay upon uh, the stopping so this is how you we can implement it all right previously in start we have a, a timer at the start okay in this in this stop delay we just add a timer uh, relay at the stop circuit okay so you have a stop button here right with this okay so this go in like uh, a set in this way right so you can see that when you press this stop okay okay let's start from the start here okay so when you start okay this uh this 
contact will make sure these two started right okay so now the power will uh, so called start this machines okay this C machine uh, this C machines okay while activating these two right so whenever now you intend to uh, press a stop button okay the stop button over here what happens is that it will now allows the signal to come in okay and activate this all right activate this timer previously you can see that it will continue to flow all right but this two circuit only this c uh c relay is uh, closed okay these two still open right but when you start to press this stop button then it will start to activate this timer and at the same time it will make sure this to close all right so this one will close and then your stop button you you can release it okay again this is uh, the concept of reopening so this one to make sure that it will continue to to operate even though the, the stop button uh, are being released released so it will continue until this timer tick okay when this timer tick then this one will now open the circuit and your machine will stop right so this is the the idea behind it right so you just need this sections okay to do this so-called stop delay functions uh, okay then the next operations uh, or procedures would be the periodic operations of machines with different time constant okay so you may want uh, machine one to operate at certain thing okay machine two to operate second thing remember we have gone through an uh an idea that uh, we have a conveyor belt these things come into one one part then the second thing will move okay so we we can actually calculate the time okay the setting such that they can uh, work in the so-called good sequence of uh, settings right we, in this case would be the time constant right so what happens is when we start the machines okay we want it to be take and take take and take on and off okay switch on and off according to the time okay so this time would be maybe you want it uh, let's say a pistons okay that operate a, a door it can be a, a machines doing an injection molding okay so this injection molding will now close okay the mold then open the the mold to release the the things that you have mold then close again okay at a certain period of time so this time usually we can uh, tune okay and optimize so by turn, turning this uh, time we are actually controlling this uh, time interval t1 and t2 on or maybe you have multiple time okay up to you right so how we can uh, take between or switch between uh, on and off we just have to incorporate these sections right so these sections itself you can see that there are t1 and t2 okay t1 on how long okay before t2 start right so it will keep switching each other so in order to do this uh, switching of uh, each other what we need to do is you can see that they are cross right so this cross feature will will tell us uh, that this one operate it will uh, stop the other one okay when the other one op operate you will stop the other one right so we have this uh, uh this cross uh, switching okay such that when uh, t1 operate okay when t1 operate after maybe let's say five seconds then it will close this uh this switch and then t2 will start to count and it will uh switch off this t1 right so t2 will now start counting after that when it takes again this t2 will now close it back okay activate this one and it will keep switching okay to give you the on and off uh, settings right so it's just an extend to your uh previous circuit right so this may look uh, complicated but uh, this one 
it's just the uh, on and off okay whether you want to man manually switch it on okay or this middle one zero okay remember zero when this switch at the zero positions it will not complete anything means uh, the machine stop okay if you want to manually turn it on all the time you just have to switch to one okay so current will flow directly to C without going through these automations right but if you want to activate the automated uh, on and off then you switch to number two then number two you now cut start to 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 take right so this number two when you switch to number two means this one you switch to number two right this switch number two you see they are dot 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 dot, dot okay meaning to say they these two switch are related it's like a uh, two troll uh, switch right two troll three switch okay so that it will connect to this one now it will activate okay and then when this activate at the same time this is the features okay that controlling the on and off with the time sequence <coughs> another one would be the automatic or manual control okay so that would be the part like uh, we have seen previously okay this one right you want the manual one okay so you just switch to here you can have your manual operation circuit over here okay you want the automatic one you just switch to this side okay you have the automatic uh, one right so you can do that by having this uh, rotatable switch okay or select select uh, selectable switch sorry okay selectable switch okay to do this okay so if you want manual so you just just turn it this side okay so meaning to say you have to press start okay or stop by itself by your own right whereas if you want to do the the automatic side then you just switch to number two then you just connect your circuit over here so this circuit number over here can be your your automatic uh, circuit like timer just we have uh, discussed previously or maybe through a sensor object comes into a, a positions it detected okay then you start to do the operations when after some time you stop then the convey will go to do and, and so on so this is how you can control through an automatic operations over there we can also uh, control multiple machines okay through one common manual manual means uh, just like previous one okay one common menu okay so we, we switch it on then command one and two will <coughs> run uh, according to your set functions or command right so you can see that you have only one uh, menu control one menu control okay then separate automatic control right so you have a uh, control one two this switch again very similar to previous one manual one okay and then you have separate uh, automatic control okay features right whereas in this case you have one automatic control okay when you switch to number one then only one type of automatic control but uh, you can separate your manual by adding this feature so this would represent the the menu operations that you press your start button and stop button manually on your own okay so you can decide when you want to start and stop on your own right so this uh, would be useful all right you can see that uh, in these examples when you may need this kind of features when let's say uh, to operate a common uh, watering pump okay 24 hours a day okay automatically so at the same time we would want to operate independently okay based on maybe consumption sometimes uh, you will say you will think that uh, at this time uh, the demand is low okay then you can manually stop it okay just switch on one by itself okay otherwise if everything goes on 
uh, properly then you want the automatic to take over you just switch to automatic at the other time you may want to manually control one by one you want pump one operate pump two not operate up to you okay you can manually uh, operate them whereas for for the previous operations you can only uh, maybe control one set meaning to say you have only one uh, manual you press three pump operate okay but uh, automatic part you may they may do the the command like uh, the demand is high then you will increase the demand and so on but this is where depends on the requirement of your of your automations okay how you want to use it okay so once you know what kind of requirement you need then you just capture this one into your design okay and start adding the features that you did okay this is how you can uh, synthesize your automation circuit right so basically it covers most of the of the functions that you may need right here is another one that uh, you may want to operate uh, a machines from more than one point okay this one is just like uh, if you have a house with uh, maybe two story right common many house with two story and so on you remember the lights at the uh, staircase okay you may operate this light from the lower ground and the upper ground right so two different point controlling one light or one machines okay so to in order to do this you need three wire okay instead of two okay normally you just need two wire okay just break one wire then the, the power will go off all right but if you want to control it more than two point then you need three wire okay so this three wire will operate in this way right you will have one okay series all the way to your uh so-called machines okay your machines over here right and then you need to add another one okay another line or another wire okay over here with the start features okay this would be the start and continue features for for your machines okay and also start features that located at the point where you want to actually control right so you can wire in this way right so from there you can have a start and stop uh, button located at the control panel one two three and so on at different locations as long as you're connecting these three wires together right so any of this if you press start now okay let's say you are at control panel 3 if you press start the current will flow all the way through control panel c and tells this machine to start when this machine to start up then this switch will continue or permanently start okay even though no one is pressing start after that right until someone in control panel to say stop right when you press stop here then it will disconnect so when this doesn't operate then this one will stop okay so you can see that you can actually control uh, machines okay from multiple point okay through three wires right so this is very common uh, wiring methods okay in the ladders case or maybe uh, nowadays you also have this so-called uh automatic lighting okay when uh the power is when it is morning a daylight okay you will switch off the the circuit okay when it's not daylight it will switch uh switch on the at night it will switch on the circuit so again there is three three pin okay that you need to control and actually they're doing this kind of uh uh, functions inside it right so you need three wire right to do this okay so now come to the next uh, part okay where you want to 
the previous one you will see that we are dealing with the basic operations how we can uh, do different features of it right so now come to uh, a specific applications I would say maybe all right so here is uh, when we deal with motor okay so in the in the motor you may want to operate in the, the rotations you may want to operate in counterclockwise or clockwise directions okay so you want to switch the directions okay by switching same same device okay you want to switch the directions of the current okay so this would be a features that usually motors or maybe a, a pneumatic uh, thing okay that you need this switching okay of this uh, same devices or actuator right so what you need to do is you run through the wire accordingly but you switch the the sequence of it all right so you can see that this r okay connected to this point s at the middle and t to the to this point right then the other side you just switch the directions r now to this point okay and t to this point so you just switch the the connections okay two set but different connections okay these different settings connected together right only separate uh, what separate them is these two relay okay that separate it so whenever you press or activate one side okay then it will make sure that it doesn't operate on the other side okay this one it must uh, call related okay it doesn't operate on the other side and then it will run okay then same thing the cross features okay that you you may able to operate right so very similar okay but uh, you can do it in this way right so here you may uh, need a light indicators okay it will be very easy for you to visualize and also in this case uh, I think most of the time uh, you may also need a mechanical latch okay mechanical latch because of the the power involved in this uh, switching you can see this is three line means three phase okay high power so the normal power relay may may or may not be able to do this switching okay you may need a mechanical type of switching meaning to say uh, it's not a semi semi solid state or whatever it is it is a pure mechanical through a contact of your relay okay a mechanical type of switching okay another uh, features uh, related to motor would be the starting uh, switch right so normally uh, you may want to start with a uh, star okay before we convert it to a delta okay so this is uh, a features that you need to start a motor normally all right in order to reduce the starting current okay because star will you draw lesser current okay whereas the delta will draw much higher current okay you cannot start with very high current immediately so you may want to do this switching uh after after you start you start it automatically it can be very fast okay draw slow and then fast okay so this is the features of a star delta start uh, of a motor okay you may have this procedure inside it right so this is a, a star connections okay this is a, a so-called delta a delta connections okay so you can see that uh, a star current will be lesser than the the delta one okay so what happens is that when we press the start button start this always open start we go through here and then c3 will activate so meaning to say this one will will activate right so c3 uh, close then the current will now the signal will flow from here okay to run through c1 and c c1 and c2 right so start c1 and c2 okay but then 
why this one normally close when this c3 run this one close this one open okay this one open that's why current will only flow through these two two contact or two coin right to to actually run this one okay so in this one you can see that to run it c1 c3 need to be on okay c1 c3 need coin c1 and c3 need to be uh, on that's it okay so you run it. okay then after that uh you may want to do the switching okay so this is where the switch uh, comes in okay you can see that when the current flow through this c1 okay this connect will now start to close okay so when this c1 close now the current will flow from this side okay and go to here again right previously this is open remember okay and when this C1 run, now this one will take, okay? This is a timer. After, when it takes, okay? This one will close, okay? When this close, this one will deactivate and this one will open and this one will close again. Now, because of this, after a certain time, the current will now flow in this two directions okay which one is which is uh, the c1 and c2 okay and by that you are sh shifting uh, from uh, star to a uh, delta right so this is through this uh, procedure okay Man automatic switching through a time uh, a time okay so this is how we can do it right Next would be uh, the automation circuit for sensor, right? Again, for the sensor, uh, this one is uh, again very important. Uh, I would say important but basic uh, features of an automation. An automation without much sensors is like uh, a dead man, right? So we will just continue to do no response, okay? Even even something is strong it will not react okay so an automation circuit normally come with a sensor and when there is a sensor then meaning to say you are not only commanding the the circuit the automation circuit through latch okay you are also commanding it through sensor okay giving this signal okay something is not right so when we are dealing with this kind of signal uh, most of the time we want it to be able to call something to stop right so when we want to call something to stop means to say we want the ability to cancel order right something you press start okay then it will start to check everything but something is not right you have the ability to to call it to stop okay before it involve a uh, much uh, worse conditions okay so how we will uh, operate here is the operations of a machines with a cancelling ability right so you may in this case this uh, cancelling ability is being uh, signified by a sensor uh, let's say here the flow switch okay so this flow switch in these uh, cases would be uh, to detect whether there is liquid going through or not okay or wait if it is not much liquid going through so this flow switch you actually drop okay and we're not uh, moving and giving a signal that water is not there okay and we must stop okay it's after some time so again this is a protection features of this pump okay this pump again is hydro lubricated okay most of the time we want it to be filled up with water so that you don't actually spin your your the blade uh, okay the blade uh, against a wind or a mixture of wind and water right that will create a, a large damage okay inside it so what happened is that uh, in these examples, you want to pump from tank A to tank B, okay? If let's say tank A is without water, okay, let's say without water, okay, or very less water, 
okay so it may not able to pump somehow sometime okay in the middle of here it may get blocked or whatever it is we don't know right as long as the water it doesn't flow after some time okay then we will stop the operation of this pump okay so we can actually calculate how long this time delay should operate right so this time delay operate you can estimate how long it takes to pump from point a to point b okay based on your normal uh, or the design flow velocity all right so you can estimate the time and the distance so you know roughly how long you want to wait okay before you say stop the operations okay so here you need a sensor okay to tell you to act as a switch over here okay and the delay features okay so you just go to look for the delay automation circuit okay something looks like this okay you just replace it with uh, this uh, command right that's it okay you have successfully designed uh, uh, automation circuit with a cancelling ability okay when something not right okay for a certain time it will cut off that's it right so very straightforward right then another one would be let's say based on the level control right again you may have different levels okay of uh, water over here okay if it is uh, too high it should stop when it is too low it should pump okay very straightforward again so what we need to do is we just want to keep it a, in the level okay within a certain level of uh, of the tank okay so what we need to do we just need a, a contact over here when it detects within the range it will continue to operate if it is not within the range is this to disconnect the, the circuit okay very straightforward again for sure you can always uh, add up other features that you want okay that you have learned previously whether you want to delay or whatever it is right also you may want to uh, operate multiple pumps okay here is uh, two pumps based on demand okay when when the water drop very low okay lower than the limit e1 okay level e1 then meaning to say maybe the water uh, is very less okay not able to cater the demand that you supply okay someone someone is using the or some machines are using the liquid very fast okay so it drop very fast so in order to keep up the demand you need to operate two pumps okay but once the the two pumps uh operate okay it will flow very fast faster than the demand most of the time okay again the sections of the pump and the demand you have to uh, adjust accordingly right so after it meets the demand as well as filling up okay then now uh, you can switch off the pump okay so that one only one pump is operating okay most of the time is to control that uh, the level of the water always within the E1 and E3 level let's say okay so you can always uh, uh, operate multiple devices or actuator or pump or motor okay based on the demand okay that you have set in your requirement right so in order to achieve this one just two separate or multiple uh, line okay every one of these is being controlled by one sensor that's it okay very straightforward okay so that would uh, conclude uh, most of the the methods on how you can actually derive the automation circuit right so so far any questions So if no questions, we will proceed and uh, we will address if the questions comes in later on. Right. Here uh, is how we can actually 
designed for a very large automation because uh, when we, we draw all this parallel line, okay, we will forget where this relay is actually controlling. Okay, it's it's everywhere. All right. So in order to uh, help you to solve this uh, design problem, okay, or uh, some okay design problem, all right. So you may want to identify the locations of your relay. Okay where it's actually uh, related to okay so first thing is you label all your branches okay so you will label it one two three four five and so on so that's why putting it in parallel is very uh, important okay so that you can actually label them okay just like uh, in your document you have line number one until ten okay when you tell something wrong at line number three so people will know which line number three okay especially when everyone is doing uh, things online all right if i give a drawing i say uh, something wrong with uh, the relay c3 let's say okay relay c3 so you may start to search where is c3 right but if you can tell on the line number one then immediately you know c3 is at line number one right so this is very important especially when this is only five lines imagine you have hundreds of lines okay so this will helps you to identify things uh, much faster right by arranging it uh, in a proper way right so number the branches then you put a, a small table with open and closed notations okay normally open and normally close notations over here right so and also remember we also we have mentioned that uh, for each parallel line we try to only control one relay all right so only one relay or coil right so that we will know that this table is related to this okay we don't have multiple table okay to avoid all these confusions okay if you want multiple just you can see you can just parallel it out parallel it up and so on right so put a notation open close right then now next would be in every single column now okay imagine you just assume this is in in the column way right you can do left and right okay name no matter right so now for every single column what you can do is you do this right denote the number of the branch okay where a close or open contact exists okay so you will see that connected to c3 okay, connected to c3 is related to this one okay so you know that this is open contact normally open so open contact line number two line number two then at c3 again okay con this c3 is related to this okay c3 line number three normally open okay number three then here we don't have okay here we have one okay normally close normally close all right so immediately by looking at this we will know which one it will switch on and off okay when you do this switching right then we just repeat again step number three okay for this line okay this was related to this which is located normally close okay at line number one then uh, we have another for c3 relay we have these three things okay you now two open okay four five open one close okay and, and the last one okay so immediately from this table we know okay at any given for any given relay we would know that this is a control controlling the opening and the closing at line four five one and so on right that is the benefit of it okay in the implementation itself when we develop for an industrial type of uh, automation systems uh, basically we just need to collect the requirement the very important things okay without this requirement you are solving something maybe 
no one wants okay or you're solving the wrong problem maybe okay we don't know so this operational uh, requirement is very important and this also not only related to the to the client okay but also as an engineer remember uh, safety and compliance to regulation is very important okay for a client they will never <coughs> never tell you oh i have this safety <coughs> law to comply okay unless someone uh, or the authority always ask them a report okay that's why uh, the government department and so on will press the company to give this kind of report okay otherwise they will never tell you they need to comply to certain safety or environment uh, regulations and so on okay so you as an engineer must also know okay what kind of standard regulations that you may need to comply right when you do this uh, kind of uh, design okay you may design uh, things okay the client say uh, i have a, a process okay after we process the the wastewater we just lick it to the river okay this is what happened okay lick it to the to the river and cause pollution sometimes right that happens uh, very frequently last two years right to the river so who will tell this is wrong no one will tell them this is wrong right clients say this is our normal practice you see next plan they are doing the same thing right we still meet the minimum requirement okay of let's say uh, when you release a wastewater out okay you cannot release uh, a chemical uh, a wastewater that have a certain amount of uh, chemical okay we in the ppm part per, per millimeter and so on right so they will say okay dilute it release okay so if everyone is doing the same thing okay this is what happened and problems comes okay after that right so this kind of operation requirement you need to collect and at the same time you also have to look at the of uh, at the regulations and so on okay as an engineer to to actually make sure it's also comply with the others right then uh, you will start to design accordingly okay to the requirement and the regulations then you select okay and analyze okay selections means you select the proper hardware and then you analyze okay if it is circuit you may want to run to see whether it's operate as uh, it is or not right you can do analyze okay through the control systems uh, theory or whatever right do simulations also a kind of analysis right the, the circuit and then after that satisfy now we will start to manufacture okay we will call the manufacturer to manufacture that kind of uh, industrial switch gear let's say okay the switch gear itself right then after that we install we test after we test now the programming part comes in right so someone will have to do the programming right uh, and implement all the wiring to your device okay this switch here only one box okay you still have to connect it do the wiring to the motor and so on and do the tuning and programming right so this is the whole flow to develop an industry automation system okay so your your role may come in here and there okay depend on uh, where you are you are sitting you may at the company and client side okay you may also come from the consultant side the switch here the supplier side okay so it depends on where where your come where where is your role okay that's in contribute to the whole development stage of this uh, industrial automation system okay here is an examples of uh, how you can control three compressor at certain co combinations okay you may want uh, at zero okay nothing operates okay at one okay only the first one operate okay only the first one operate even though this is connected to the rest okay everything is open 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 right then uh, if you switch to number four 
why it's connect to number four is because uh, why we, we connect there because uh, number four you want to switch on first and second right so connect here connect here okay and connect here so that you can actually control number two okay switch one and two okay and turn off the, the third one somehow right or maybe and the third one yeah okay you can also operate everything okay so that's why number one is connected to one two and three right so that you can switch on and off accordingly so if you read carefully you can actually understand that by switching uh, this selectable uh, switch okay you can operate according to the to the configurations that you intend to right so hopefully by having all these uh, examples okay readings here and this you you now have an ideas on how to start your design and then draw your automation circuit okay start with what features you want copy that features okay from what you have learned and then expand from there to switch your requirement right so now come to the last part of uh, this sessions we would consider the safety right so this safety part uh, is something very important okay uh, again this reference would be from a book uh, written by Frank Lamb right so in any design okay, safety always first okay for engineers right so this safety first protect human before we protect the equipment okay human life more important than the machines right unless your boss tell you differently right but that is not ethical right protect human life first second protect your equipment that's why the fuse will now protect your equipment okay so they there is this two level of safety right in general most of this device okay actually uh have this safety mark marking right so in 1995 the european unions actually passed a law okay that they have this uh, safety marking or compliances okay with a, a mark ce okay you can see that uh, uh, on your toys and so on right so this ce will actually stand for communate uh, europeans okay the community of the Europeans itself that uh, it is so called safe to be used so called safe to be used okay but then we have to remember that uh, if you are selecting different devices with CE marking okay device number one motor number one CE marking device number two pump CE mark okay and so on and you combine them together it doesn't mean your 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 machine is C compliance okay because you still need to connect them together right so we have to remember that just buying CE things okay combining them together may not make your your system safe all right so you have to do this kind of uh, ideas right then uh, in order to help you okay especially when you are dealing with malaysian uh con from the malaysian context you may always refer to this uh national nios okay national institutes of occupational safety and health okay here is the website okay and the department of occupational safety and health okay the dosh right so this two is just like your the iem and the bm this is the bm okay uh the enforcement part okay to make uh, that make sure that you actually uh, follow the regulations and so on okay whereas this NIOS would be like the IEM that teach you okay doing lessons courses and so on okay to get you towards it right and then others act that you may need to make sure is uh, maybe doe right if you are dealing with the 
emissions to the environment to the air to the river or whatever okay any equipment that actually uh, release certain things okay to the air like you have a tunnel okay uh, chorobong okay any things okay you must apply to the doe okay they will ask you to fill in a, a form a license uh, that specify what you are actually admitting okay what is the level of emissions and so on okay the the radius of of your environment okay where you er erect your 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 tunnel and so on okay so that is the the requirement that you need to aware of okay but when you deal with food then also you have to deal with the food department and so on right so always remember that uh safety is very important right so here is the asimov tree law okay that you may see in some movies okay long time back okay that uh, when they envision robot working together okay then they will tell the robot to comply to this tree law okay never inject human okay no matter what it is okay second thing must obey humans instructions okay unless it injects human right and the third one must protect its existence okay the third one protect itself okay but do not com uh, do not conflict with the first two right so you can see that the the ideas remain the same okay human life first equipment second right so in the dosh website okay the dosh website malaysia dosh website you will see that uh, in assessing the safety they will use this uh, global methods okay which you will see it everywhere around the world okay here we call it hirac okay h-i-r-a-r-c hirac right you can just download this regulation using this link right so it's related to health hazard you can categorize the hazard into uh, health hazard safety hazard and environmental uh, hazards okay in order to identify it you can use various methods okay like uh, investigation report okay if there is any things happen okay the first aid record okay how many uh, how frequent uh, injuries occurs okay so those will be in your record that's why attendance logbook uh, when you use the first aid kit okay all these factories require you to actually write down okay what who is using it okay from there they will collect data okay how frequent injuries actually occurs okay at that particular place okay if very frequent then they will know something is not right okay if you don't record then nothing will be known to the management or whatever so whatever you say is useless okay you say it's not safe but from the record no injury record so how can you see it's not safe right so all this somehow will indicate something right in the in the locking uh, system okay then also inspections okay a complaints comment for sure okay you can say okay uh, studies okay and also reports produced by by them right so in analyzing the hazard now you may want to group them into likelihood of the occurrence and the severity of the hazard okay l and s okay so you can rank it as one to five as uh, from very less likely to happen to most likely to happen then the hazard whether it will only cost you just a cut or it will cause a lot of damage okay five right so by doing that then uh, you will see that there is this risk assessment uh, uh, table okay and we just multiply these two together okay l times s we give this relative risk uh, table itself okay so from this table 
if the the item or the hazard falls with the under the red group or regions okay then the risk is very high when it is falling under the yellow region then it's medium and low so this is how we can quantify the hazard okay we, we cannot say it's very dangerous but how dangerous is this okay so this is how we can see that uh, a machine is very dangerous but no one no one is actually approaching that machine okay so that is how we can do this so-called risk assessment okay now when we want to control okay so usually the the green one uh, we don't need to take much action whereas for the medium one we may need somehow a planning okay how we can make it safer okay whereas for the red one we must solve it immediately right so now come to the picture of how you can implement your knowledge in the automations and so on in order for us to control the hazard the risk itself okay two way of doing it okay very straightforward eliminations okay that is the ultimate way can we eliminate directly okay if it cannot eliminate can we substitute it okay so most of the time this is the the challenge for you okay where you are running an operations okay this machine has been there can you eliminate the source of the machines the head source of the hazard this is where it's always do the cutting there is a knife there can you eliminate the knife and the operation still work if if it is not then can we substitute it with a better knife that doesn't cut human only cut cut something else if no then we need to do this so-called engineering control right so this is the very high level type of uh, control if cannot do it then this is where your role comes in the engineering control where you may want to redesign it isolate do the automations okay put a barrier and so on okay to control the risk itself okay and then the last uh, others uh, control would be the the hygiene part and the job rotations okay dealing with the human resource okay you if it is very risky can we just rotate okay like noise pollution can we like put this workers can only work in that environment for one hour okay after that it must be swift switch out okay and do that is the, the administrative uh, control and the last uh, and the cheapest way to do it most of the time uh, the client will just say if you cut hand wear glove okay there is a spark where the protective uh, eye protect protection uh, where that is the PPE and that actually the is the lowest uh, type of hazard control okay the lowest uh, level of it okay so this is where your main role comes in and if you have this mind to always control uh, through engineering okay then when you design it will be much much uh, safer okay then without this knowledge right so what can be incorporate emergency stop right so this emergency stop is uh, very basic right removing the power from the actuators okay can be category one category two right then the second one would be putting a barrier you can see that you have this barrier in your workplace okay especially when we are interacting with uh, if with the robot right nowadays okay so we always put a barrier okay to to minimize the contact okay in a workshop you may have a safety a yellow line and so on okay but when uh, in a robotic uh, environment the arm will swing okay it will just exit your your yellow line and so on so in that case putting a, a barrier would be a much easier or more obvious guide okay uh, to protect any mishap to happen okay so 
this uh, you may put a mesh guide okay to allow the visibility of the machines okay you can still we should see it okay directly and the size of this opening depends on whether you can insert your hand or not right then also uh, as a safety you may have this uh, lock out or lock out take out uh, methods okay this is uh, when something have broken okay or you intend to to fix it right so in the production line okay you have multiple machines and so on you as a worker there let's say okay you may know it's broken okay you don't want to operate it okay after you repair but problem is people come in and out in the operations okay and you cannot always tell people this is broken right you put sign sometimes people may not see it okay because your sign may be on the other side or someone have taken it out we have blow it off okay so what we do is we do this uh, so-called lock out tag out okay lock out tag out is something like uh, this okay we put a tag okay tag it out say uh, do not remove okay and we lock it up right so what happens is that we lock the machines okay with an equipment with a padlock straightforward put a tag there right so that we will not now accidentally operate the machines okay that cause damage okay and also this is very important when we do a maintenance okay maintenance multiple switch okay people may go inside and someone turn it on then problem happens okay so before operating or doing the maintenance they may also put this uh, lock out tag out okay so that no one can actually switch it on or yeah switch it on okay while you do the maintenance right so this is the idea behind it then other things would be uh, intrinsic safety okay means uh, you may use uh, instrumentations okay to actually control this kind of uh, explosion and flammable okay <coughs> of your of your design okay the bacteria is non explosion uh, sensitive and so on okay so that would be depending on the device and the industry that you are, you are dealing with okay you may want to have an explosion proof housing and also you may want uh, uh, depending on the industry okay so the hazard may change okay so the selection of material and the quality uh, must be there all right to make things safe right then last would be this uh, design mitigations okay always with the round corners okay and you have this uh, built-in safe tells uh safe test uh, software implemented as well okay maybe you just do some coding such that uh, the machines will actually detect okay where is the fault something is not right okay so just like autopilot okay but sometimes uh, still human okay like the autopilot of a uh, aeroplane right that you can see uh, in the recent four years okay problem happens with the aeroplane that it detect a fault and the pilot cannot overtake that uh, that alert okay while it's flying so it's only alert and cut off certain things that cause the the problem to occur right so you your software can actually uh, do this testing and tell something is wrong but you you may always provide uh, uh, options for the human to interrupt okay to take over okay when you you don't want it to too too intelligent in, in some sense it, it locks humans from doing what they they can do right so that is the things right so overall uh, um, equipment efficiency can be estimated as such okay how long time is where available okay availability right operating time over the planned production time then performance okay the ideal cycle multiplied by the the number of pieces and so on okay per your operation time how much you can produce and the quality okay how many defect you actually detected okay so 
by multiplying all this you may get the so-called overall machines uh, effectiveness okay to estimate your effectiveness of your design or the the automations itself right so this is the the main ideas when you start to design for your automations right so that's all for today's okay these lessons right so any questions before we call these sessions to an end let's check no questions no questions so far So if no questions, don't forget to take the quiz one, okay? It's very straightforward. I think 10 or 12 questions, I forgot. Okay, I think 10 questions, objective, okay? You just click, 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 done, right? Then also submit your assignment one, okay? Right, so no questions about the localization, yes? Anything you want to ask about localizations, Stanley? So we just summarize the status on Do you mean the based on the slide image? Slide image no. Is it about the assignment or from this slide? Maybe Stanley, you can uh, call in through WhatsApp so that I can turn on the mic. Yes. Oh, so yes. About the slide twenty-six. Slide twenty-six. Okay. Yeah. So we just like summarize each like C three, C one, T, and C two statements. Oh, oh the, the table is it? Yes. Yes. We just put under there uh, so that uh, we will. Uh, make sure you see oh, yeah, okay. right. 
Thank you. Okay, thank you, Stanley. Okay, so if no more questions, uh, that's all for today, right? Thank you, everyone, and happy Friday. Okay, bye.